Hello, my name is Emmanuel Ortiz with SLC TV, and here is what is happening in Sterling and Lancaster. The Bigelow Public Library will be holding a book and bake sale on, those, on September 7th from 9 to 4 p.m. For more information, contact the library at 978-365-4160. The Lancaster Village Church is organizing a 5K run and walk on September 8th. For more information, visit www.lancaster5k.org or call Gail Moncour at 508-654-6486. The Seven Bridge Writers Collaborative will be hosting on September 21st at 10.30 a.m. a lecture by Joel Mule on getting the most from your library. For more information, visit www.sevenbridge.org. The Sterling Fair will be held September 6th from 5 p.m. to 11 p.m. September 7th, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., and Sunday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. The fair is free and open to the public, and parking is also free. I'm Lex Thomas with Sterling Lancaster Community Television. Last October, Sterling held its first business forum, a very successful event that was intended to bring business leaders, community leaders, our services, our government, and residents together to discuss what businesses wanted in Sterling and what residents wanted and what was necessary for the growth of Sterling. Because of course, as you know right now, we're also working on a master plan and a town revitalization. So there's a lot going on right now with the growth of Sterling. One of the things that came out of the meeting last October was the desire to have a Sterling Business Association, which I have been facilitating ever since. We do monthly meetings and the purpose of the group is there again, to bring businesses together, business leaders, people that run businesses and own businesses in Sterling, to talk about what they need, what works, what doesn't, what do we need more of, what do we need less of. Now, we are at this point about, I guess, nine months into this, and we are looking for more members for the Sterling Business Association. So if you have a business, it could be a small business, a large business. I'm a small business owner. I operate out of my home and I'm a one person operation, but I'm part of the Sterling business community. So even if you're a small business, that's fine. Or a large business. Our meetings are the third Wednesday of every month and they are announced in Sterling Meeting House News. They take place from noon to about 1.30 in the Buttrick Municipal Building in room 205 where the select uh, board meets as well. And every month I put out an agenda of things that we're going to talk about. And right now we're looking at what is the chart for the Sterling Business Association. What is its mission and what does it look like in future? So if you are a Sterling business person or if you know of a business person, a business owner or somebody affiliated with a business that would like to be involved with this, please, please get in touch. You can contact me directly at my email lex at lexthomas.com at my cell phone number, 978-870-5757. And I will be happy to both answer your questions and welcome you to the Sterling Business Association. And just as an FYI, we're going to be doing our second Sterling Business Forum uh, later this, uh, this fall. It'll be in either late October or early November, and there'll be more information coming out on that. So hope to see you at this. Uh, we're all working toward making Sterling an even better place to live and do business. I'm Lex Thomas, roving reporter with Sterling Lancaster Community Television. We're in the depths of summer now. It is August and people are thinking about going back to school. They're thinking about Labor Day, but also because we're heading into early September, people are also thinking and looking forward to the Sterling Fair. And I am delighted to have with me today, Doug Downey. He is the chair of the Sterling Fair Committee, as I'm sure most of you know, because I have interviewed him here before. <laughs> Hello, Doug. Thank Hi, you Lex. and welcome. Oh, thank so you, thank we're you. coming up to the fair. First of all, preliminaries. When is it? So it is going to be uh, Friday, September September 6th, Saturday, September 7th, and Sunday, September 8th. Okay, we need to know that because we all need to know when to really, really 
hope for good weather. So yes, we have to do the pray, opposite right? of, a, of a rain dance. We need to do a sun dance, <laughs> exactly, definitely. Exactly. All right. Yeah. Now, uh, I know that there's a lot going on with the fair this year. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me a little bit, first of all, about the fair. Now, I realize this is one of the only free fairs Yes. that remain in the country. So just talk yeah. a little bit about the fair. Yes, yeah, so we, uh, we are, as far as we know, the largest fair of its kind that is still free admission, free parking, um, at least in New England and Northeast and probably the country. Um, but we pride ourselves on being free, having the free parking. We're an all-volunteer fair, so everybody that is at the fair that you see working, setting up, uh, working all year, uh, all volunteers. So nobody gets paid to do this fair. So a lot of commitment from a lot of people. From so yeah. all volunteer, that means that you obviously are always on the search for volunteers. Are Absolutely. you still looking for volunteers this year? Absolutely. What are you yes, looking yes. for? So specifically, we're always looking for help during the fair. So set up, um, take down, people to, to help like with trash, to volunteer, even to sit in the exhibit hall to make sure that, you know, people aren't touching that kind of stuff. Um, the big thing though we really, really need is people to join the fair committee. Mm -hmm. And we have some big openings on the fair committee, but that is more of a dedicated uh, position mm -hmm. than just, you know, coming for the weekend of the fair. So, mm -hmm. um, but we're really to the point where we have a lot of really dedicated fair committee members and I can't be more proud of these people but they work hard and some of them have been doing it for a long time so we want to get some people in that can help out maybe assist eventually take over some of the positions um, specifically we have livestock is one we're looking for so Chip and uh, Ta Chip and Tana Hallett have been the livestock for quite a while do an awesome job but they're looking to pass it on to someone else and there's still help and you know they have built the livestock area so well that we, I can't even say what they've done. It's been so great. Um, but we'd like somebody that could come in and take that over with their assistance and help out with that. We're looking for people with media and marketing skills that can help us to get our fair out, especially to a lot of the publications in New England. You know, great things like this, right? The Sterling Lancaster Community Television. The, we we help pride ourselves on, on all of you helping us with that um, and with the advertisement there. We don't pay for advertising with the Sterling mm -hmm. Fair. That's one of the things that's in our kind of bylaws. So we rely on a lot of these like free medias and, and uh, things that we can get out to the community. Um, we're also looking for field setup and takedown. So we've had two recent losses at the fair committee uh, that were big part of the setup and the takedown and we need some people that will help with that and that's being at the fairgrounds a couple days or sometimes even a week before uh, and being there a couple days to a week after to make sure everything goes up smoothly goes down that we turn over the airport the way we received it so that they can continue it as an airport. Now I'm sure also when you're looking for committee members uh, you're looking not only for the present but you're thinking also of the future of the fair. Yes, yes. So we're looking for people that will come in, uh, you know, it, it, you know, younger people too that want to continue this great tradition uh, and learn, right? Uh, there's a lot sure. of things to learn on it. It's tough because where we don't have a permanent home, it's tough to show somebody what the fair is until it's set up. Right. So it's like I can't take somebody down in, you know, February and say, hey, this is what the fair looks like because it's an airport. Right. <laughs> so, yes. um, so we have to rely on the people that have done it to kind of explain how it happens mm -hmm. and then see how it happens magically. I say magically, but it's because of all the hard work of all the committee members. But how this goes, goes up in basically two or three days and comes down in two days. Um, now, as you say, this is normally an airport, so obviously you have a tremendous amount of support and cooperation from the Sterling Airport and from the people yes. that are the owners there. Absolutely. I, I can't say enough about these people. So the Siborowski family, they own the land of the airport. And then we have the Simpson family, you know, Jimmy Simpson Sr., Jimmy Simpson Jr. They basically close their airport every year for, for a week for us. Um, and that's a business that they're not receiving income from. And that's their donation to the fair. I mean, it's a big, big undertaking. Without them, we couldn't have the fair. Sure. And they also, they donate to the fair. They donate equipment. I mean, I can't say enough for the, the Simpson family how much they do for us. Mm -hmm. um, they really, uh, they kind of do it quietly, um, but we like to recognize them because, you know, that, like I said, without that, that land, we don't have this, 
nothing big enough that we know of right now in Sterling sure. that can hold it. So. Now, also, you na you uh, mentioned some you know big shoes to be filled on the committee, and I know yes. one of those is Ray Rugg Sr., to whom yes. I believe this year's fair is dedicated. It is. I yes. have a, a, our shirt, if yes. I can show that to the yeah. camera here. So Ray Rugg uh, Sr. passed away unexpectedly in December. Big, big loss, not only to the fair, but to the whole Sterling to the community, community yeah, of course. Yeah. And, and an emotional loss, too, because uh, I can't tell you how much that man did for the fair. Mm -hmm. And I mean that because we don't know. He just mm -hmm. did so much. Mm -hmm. He was always, always there, right? He was there weeks before it set up. He was there weeks after. The whole Rugg family, right? Gloria, Ray Jr., I mean, they, they just help us so much. And, you know, I've heard some wonderful stories. Uh, I recall yes. you telling me a story about why, why didn't you yeah, have that? So, my favorite story with Ray, uh, and he's one of the reasons I got involved with the fair, uh, but we were had a fair, and it was a couple of years ago, and we have pipes that go underground, uh, water pipes, and uh, this was just the type of guy Ray was. Somebody accidentally drove a tent stake into one of the water pipes, and the water spraying all over the place, right? And so myself and a couple other fair committee members, we're running around, we got the golf carts, what do we do, what do we, you know, and I'm panicking personally inside, I'm like, what, you know, this is, this is tragedy. While all this is going on, we're all panicking, Ray just quietly comes up in a golf cart, gets a shovel, whatever he did, he dug it up, he patched the pipe, put, and when I finally kind of got there, and I saw Ray doing that, Ray's like, don't worry about it, it's all set. Oh my. And that's the type of guy he yes. was, he just... Uh, whenever there was a problem with the fair, when any of it, I don't care what it was that came yeah. up, his kind of motto was, don't worry about yeah. it. We'll figure it just out. Just a real stand-up guy. Yeah. Absolutely. Just, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. So those yeah. are big, big yeah. shoes we to fill. Him. Yes, I'm yeah. sure. Now, I know one of the things that people missed last year, and I know that it was unavoidable, but uh, one of the big uh, attractions uh, was not available last year, and I yes. understand that it is this year. It is, yes. So the arts and crafts for the exhibit hall. Right. Um, so we weren't able to do it last year. Uh, there was some uh, room or, you know, we just didn't, didn't have the room to do it and it was kind of last minute. So um, we have a solution this year with a special tent that we're going to put up. Um, and we have um, somebody who has joined the, the fair committee, um, Heather Rockwell, along with Joan Strang, who's been doing it for years. And another person I can't say enough about, Joan is awesome. Um, but they are going to take over the exhibit hall in this new area and it's protected by the weather. That was the big thing we couldn't do last year. Mm -hmm. We couldn't get anything soon enough to protect these, mm -hmm. you know, arts and crafts people have worked hard on. Sure. Um, you know, so this will be protected and we're bringing it back and we're really excited about that. And we apologize for last year, but all we can do is move forward and sure. make sure it happens this year. Too. Now, yeah. I know that one of the things in speaking to you repeatedly about, about these issues is that you uh, are very con uh, cognizant of uh, retaining what people love and know about the fair, but also yes. So you want to keep it fresh and you want to keep a new audience coming and you want to keep people engaged in it. Yes. So are there any new things going on this year to help that? So there is. Um, so we're going to make some adjustments to, we added a second entertainment tent last year. Mm -hmm. Was And the pancake breakfast is, is back again. Great. Um, that wasn't in the best area so we learn from those mistakes right sure. so we have a better uh, positioning for that tent so we're gonna have a second entertainment tent with a pancake breakfast from the Grange uh, so they're gonna do that as one of nice. the beloved things um, we are going to we're bringing the Portuguese booth back so Wonderful. the Corbett family is coming yes. back and that's Always another thing that attraction. people have looked for yes. and then one of the things we're really excited about um, a couple of years ago we added the lawnmower uh, rider lawn tractor rider more drag races on Friday night on Sunday, we're going to have the Ride More Garden Lawn Tractor okay. pulls. Okay. So these are not the big John Deere. We still have those on Saturday, yes. right? The big John Deere's and the internationals and that that are pulling, which has always been a big part of the fair. Yeah. But these are, you know, your everyday lawn, what I mow my lawn with, right? <laughs> that you are going to try to pull. They might be a little souped up, you know, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but just your regular lawn tractor. So we're really excited about that, and that will be on Sunday. So. Excellent. And you're still going to have the frying pan, the skillet the, toss, the skillet and all toss, that. Yeah, oh, and I think popular. we have had a couple people in their 90s last year that right. did it. Yes. Um, I, I've heard rumors as people that are practicing. They're practicing. Still. I've yep. heard those same yep. rumors. Hard to buy a know, skillet right so now they're... in this area because <laughs> people are, are buying them up That's to get right. ready. But yeah. frog jumping contests, lawn right. soaring, the kitty yeah. tractor pulls, all yeah. that stuff. And that's all free. Yes. Um, you know, that, that's the great that's thing. That's the amazing so. thing about this. That's yeah. right. Yeah. But I know that you also depend on people buying the buttons to yes. really support this. So yes. you've got the buttons here yep. and there. This so this is this year's. Yes. Button. Yeah. 
Um, it's the tractor, which was uh, Ray Rugg Sr.'s favorite thing, right? Yes. Uh, so you can see he's yeah, on the tractor on the here. Tractor there. We get his face. Yeah. Um, he just loved John Deere tractors, antique right. tractors. They, the Rugg family runs the antique tractor and engine show. Right. Um, so you know, we we had to do a button dedicated to him and the shirt. Sure. So, yeah. uh, but we re really rely on these buttons. This yes. is what keeps the the fair free. Yes. Uh, this is a big part of our income. Is you know, you don't have to buy one to get in, right? Right. But we really, uh, and a lot of Appreciate people are very it. generous. We we sell them for three dollars. Yeah. A lot of people will give us more than that um, and I've seen people walking around with just years and years worth of yes, buttons on yeah, so they're really yeah. quite a collector's yep. item as well exactly. so Doug once again the dates are the September Friday September 6th yeah um, it goes from I think it's 3 30 to 11 yes. Friday fireworks Friday night um, unless it's raining or if there's threat of rain, it'll be Saturday sure. night. Uh, Saturday will be 9 to 11, mm -hmm. 9 a.m. to 11 p.m. Yeah. Pancake breakfast, I believe, is 7 to 10. Mm -hmm. um, that, it's in that area. Uh, same thing on Sunday, pancake breakfast. And then Sunday goes from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So yeah. you've heard it all right here from one of the guys that gets this all set up and going. It's the place to be on that weekend in September. We'll see you all at the Sterling yes, Fair. Please come to the fair. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. <laughs> Thank you. The Neshoba Integrated Preschools have availability for the 2019-2020 school year. To apply, call Linda Milton at 978-779-0539, extension 3012. The Day of Memorial Library presents Touchable Tales Story Hour presented by Equitarium on September 18th at 1 p.m. Children aged pre-kindergarten to first grade will hear stories and be able to touch the tales of animals. Registration is required by calling Marin at 978-368-8928, extension 5. Senior Strong returns to the Sterling Senior Center, providing strength, flexibility, and balance training. This class takes place Friday at 1 p.m. starting September 13th and ending November 1st. For more information, call the center at 978-422-3032. Registration is now open for the Seven Bridge Riders Collaborative autumn writing groups. To register or for more information, visit www.sevenbridge.org. I'm Emmanuel Ortiz, and that's what's happening.